Janine, as a roundup of the things we've been talking about, can you perhaps give us an indication of what you think is on the horizon? What things are about to emerge and become evident for people around the world? Mm, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, to give what I see and what I understand. Um, so based on the two templates that I've shared, um, the first one being the replay of the 66, 70, 73 AD attack on Jerusalem and attack on Judah, that is replaying 2015, 2019, 2020, and um, moving into a grand finale, um, 2022, 2023. So based on that template, as well as the 2020 template of the events that happened the day that Jesus died, um, what I see coming up is in September, which is the ninth month, which was that ninth hour that Jesus died, um, I believe, and, and I'm sharing this uh, with a whole repertoire of researchers who are all calling out and warning that September is going to be a very serious month. So I wouldn't be saying this just based on the template, but there's a weight of evidence, a huge weight of evidence that um, in September we're going to be facing a mega crisis. So I'll explain the reason why. Last year, 2019, was a harbinger year, an announcement of judgment before everything is fulfilling this year. Um, in 2019, and I can prove that, and the way I prove that, it might take a little bit, but there were two blood moons seen on the day of Tisha B'Av. Tisha B'Av is the date when um, they would go out into the orchards to inspect the trees for fruit. If the trees, trees weren't bearing fruit, they'd be cut down and burned in the fire. Now, John the Baptist, who warned of, or who announced Jesus' arrival, he said um, the axe is laid at the root of the tree. Whoever brings forth not good fruit will be cut down and burned in the fire. He made an allusion to this saying that there's a consequence. If we do reject Christ, if we don't accept his pleading to us, he's wanting to save us. But if we don't, well, bad things are going to happen. And um, so there was a blood moon on January 2019 and then a blood moon January 2020 on this very same date, announcing a year period. Now, Jesus told a parable about a fig tree um, that the owner came to to get harvest some figs and there were no figs on it and the gardener came and the gardener said oh give me a year I'll take a year I'm going to dig it around I'm going to fertilize it I'll tend it maybe it'll bring forth some fruit so the arrival of the owner to say oh it needs to be cut down and the appeal by the gardener represents Jesus work of intercession saying give us a year so that's what this uh, blood moons symbolize this year period the announcement of judgment but then a year later the fulfillment of judgment <clears throat> consequence think of judgment as a consequence and so um, and so the essence of the message is that this year we can look back at what happened at the same time last year last year 9-11 there was an event um, on 9-11, which is a significant date because we know what happened in 2001 on 9-11, but 9-11 just happens to be the number that is written on the Jesuits' rings. Now, it's a 1XX1, and we find that on a huge billboard, this number was put at ground zero after the events of 9-11. And so this is their signature number. And um, there's symbolic numerical meanings um, to, the, to the number. But last year on 9-11, there was a 11,000 climate scientists who called for depopulation of the planet. And on the 12th of the night, the very next day, the Pope called for um, all world leaders to come to Rome and to sign up to the Re-Education Alliance agenda to sign a compact now it was actually a code this message was a code and he gave a date for it which was the 14th of the 5th 2020 this date happened to be the date of saint corona's feast day 
um, Saint Corona uh, was a saint and she was recognised as a saint of epidemics and so there was a, a very heavily coded message here that when the when the corona um, coronavirus is rolled out you need to sign up to the new world order um, new world government COVID-19 government that's what this was it was a coded message because nobody ended up going to Rome on the 14th of the 5th so we know it clearly was a coded message and the other thing we know is that it was on the date of Pope John Paul II's um, birthday it hit the centenary of his 100th birthday or the centenary of his birthday I should say you can't have a double there um, and he's died and he's been sainted by the current Pope um, but there is a message in that because Pope John Paul II is reported by um, William Cooper to have challenged all world leaders by saying that the Pope is in a position of authority to rule the world government because the whole world recognises that they changed the Sabbath to Sunday from Saturday to Sunday and the whole world agrees with and goes along with their change. Now this is quite an affront to, to God because he says I change not and he wrote the Ten Commandments and um, anyway so this is Pope John Paul II's challenge to world leaders so there's a code there as well and so 9-11 this year I expect that we're going to see massive depopulation. Now I'm not putting it out there as a prediction but just based on the weight of evidence that I have already I think this is a date that they have picked um, and we're going to see very likely whole cities attacked. Now would that mean that the depopulation is going to occur in double quick time? I think there could be some sudden attacks, yes, absolutely. Um, so just on that point, I had a dream, and I've had, I've had two dreams now. I had a dream last year, and I was shown 9-11 with like a nuclear sign around it, of concentric circles around it. So God was alerting me to that date. And just the other day, I had a friend inviting me over to her place. Very, well, she's a researcher as well, very concerned about what's going on. And she had been praying, God, show me what's going on, show me what to do. And during the night, God gave me a dream in which he reminded me of that previous dream and of 9-11 with the nuclear sign around it. And um, in the dream, I woke up and I told my friend um, about the dream that God had reminded me of. And then I really woke up. And... I feel that God is telling me, even though I'm out telling people now, I'm still in a dreamlike state. We're all going to wake up when it really happens. Um, so I, based on that evidence, um, I've got to at least put it out there. I don't want to say it with 100% um, certainty, but I do feel that there is a warning. And um, based on that, based on Jesus' call to get out of the cities, um, I'm encouraging people to leave the cities. Um, that, that is something I'm seriously encouraging people to do. That's not the only danger that the Sydney's face, but particularly Sydney. Now, I need to explain about Sydney. In 2019, God began giving me the Joan 3 call to go to Sydney. Um, it's a long story. I have got it written down. I maybe will share it at some point because it's quite, it was really mind-blowing. Um, lots of miracles happened. For example, uh, the very first time I went, to Ward Sydney, I didn't know, I didn't have a clue what to do, but I just thought I'll act on it. I was, in, I went to Darling Harbour. There was an expo on down there, and I thought maybe I can chat with people. Um, I ended up just throwing my hands up in the air and thought, who is ever going to listen to me? You know, and so I just prayed while I was down there. God, please reveal to Sydney its danger. I didn't even know what the danger was myself at the time. The very next day, in the same harbour three Chinese warships appeared, unexpected, unannounced, and undeterred by Australia's naval um, ships. And nobody knew about it, except for ScoMo, sorry, I should say Scott Morrison, our Prime Minister, who was over in, um, <clears throat> in um, the Solomon Islands at the time. And they stayed here for three days, and they stayed over the 30th anniversary of the Tiananmen Square Massacre. 
And so it was a very strong message at a point where for the very first time in 30 years they acknowledged and they defended their position at the Tiananmen Square Massacre. And so um, that was a wake up call for everybody at the time the Hong Kong protests were going on. Uh, but for them to have got into Sydney Harbour without any deterrence, um, we know what what the what the warning is anyway. Now another harbinger of what's coming um, for Sydney, and this is an urgent call to Sydney pe people to repent because I know a city of five million people are not going to just be able to get up and leave their city. So really, the only option for city uh, for Sydney is a call to repent and a call to turn to God um, and to turn to Jesus and. Um, receive his salvation and get rid of everything that separates you from him now there's a lot of idolatry in our culture um, so I'm encouraging people to get rid of everything that is idolatry in every form and that um, that means um, a lot of these video games are very very, very evil um, a lot of movies are very evil there's a lot of um, you know, open doorways for the enemy and it opens up a doorway for Satan to have power in our lives. Um, but I'll tell you about the other warning that I had for Sydney. So um, I was in um, I was in Canberra, I went to the religious freedom debate at the National Press Club where um, Martin Isles from the Australian Christian Lobby was um, doing a debate. <coughs> And, um, and I was there basically saying, look, our constitutional freedoms protect our religious liberty here. Section 116, we don't need to revise it. That was my position. And I presented that to both debaters. Um, but straight after that, um, God led me to, miraculously, it's quite a story, but he led me to the war memorial, um, to the submarine there. Um, my son was saying, my son's name is Joshua, and he was saying, Mummy, can we go to the submarine um, at the War Memorial? I had no idea about it. When I got there, I discovered it was a complete replay of an attack on Sydney in 1942. And um, it's got aeroplanes, got submarines, got everything, lights flashing, you know, noises and, and the whole thing. It's in a, um, a huge area. And there was a two-storey red sign, a huge red sign, you know, about this wide that just said, Attack on Sydney. Um, 1942. Now, I never knew Sydney had ever come under attack before. And um, while I was standing there with my son Joshua, with another lady who God had miraculously led me to, we were standing there and we were reading the blurb at the bottom. This other couple came up and they're from our same denomination. They'd come all the way from Queensland. We didn't know them. They didn't know us. And that he stood there and he told me about the attack that had already happened on Sydney. He was there and he was a veteran and he had PTSD so he felt quite traumatized reliving it he was traumatized just being there in the room and um, when we both sort of discovered who we all were we just hugged each other like we were just we knew that it was sort of a God moment we call it it was um, it was an amazing thing um, but the fact for me that is very significant it is the date that this happened was what's known as Judgment Day on God's calendar. 